Welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In today's video, we are going to add the first 20 cards to our Momir Vig Cube with mana values of 2. <laughs> What's up, MTGBC, baby? That is the MTG Burgeoning Community. Here we are with the second installment of our Momir Vig Cube, and we are going to add the first 20 creatures with converted mana cost of two. If you missed MTG Burgeoning's introduction to our Momir Vig Cube, click the link in the description below and watch that video. Additionally, you can check out the contents of our cube thus far at Cube Cobra, also found in the description below. So let's get right to our 20 creatures. The first one, Adanto Vanguard. We got a 1-1 Vampire Soldier, and if it's attacking, it gets plus two, plus zero. We can also pay four life, and he gains indestructible until end of turn. Pretty good. This is a great way to have some combat shenanigans, both in defense and in offense. So, Adanto Vanguard, you are number one. Number two, we have Inok Bondkin, a 2-1 human soldier with the Outlast mechanic. So, make sure your, your basic land deck is packing white so that you can take advantage of Inok Bonkin's Outlast ability. You can tap one and a white, turn this creature sideways, and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. It can only be done as a sorcery, however, which makes the Outlast mechanic a little weaker than it could be. Additionally, it says each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has first strike, so you can give Anak Bonkin first strike just by utilizing its Outlast ability. Additionally, throughout the uh, cube itself, we're going to have a myriad of ways to put plus one, plus one counters on creatures. So Anak Bonkin could be a very valuable creature to conjure up on your second turn. Number three, we have a Johnny's Pride Maid. It's a 2-2 cat soldier. Whenever you gain life, you're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on this feline. Not much to say about this. There's going to be a lot of ways to gain life in this cube. And if you can pair the Johnny's Pride Maid with those life-gaining abilities, you're going to have a great creature throughout the game. Creature number four, we have Alluring Siren, a 1-1 one, one Siren creature. It does not really give us much in the offensive department. However, we can tap Alluring Siren and target creature and opponent controls attacks us this turn if able. This could be a very valuable defensive ploy, particularly if there's a creature that we want to make sure our opponents can you know, find its way into the graveyard if it's if it has an activated ability that's really bogging down the game or bogging down our board state. So Alluring Siren is added to this cube for its defensive abilities and its defensive capabilities, of course. All right, creature number five, Asylum Visitor. We got a 3-1 Vampire Wizard that reads at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, you draw a card and you lose one life. In a game of Momir, it's it's not unreasonable to think that there will be numerous players at the table because we're trying to build a multiplayer cube out of this particular type of format. It's not unreasonable to see players without cards in their hand, particularly if we're getting towards the late game stages of a match. So if we can get around the table and put some cards in our hand because our opponents don't have them, that's just going to work in our favor. That means we can cast more, we can summon more creatures to the battlefield, get some more lands into play. Asylum Visitor could be a sneaky good way to refill our hand. Creature number six, we have Avalanche Caller, a 1-3 Snow Human Wizard. And it has a fantastic ability if you're able to use it. We can tap two and target Snowland we control becomes a 4-4 elemental creature with Hexproof and Haste until end of turn. It is still a land. 
this is one of those creatures that says, make sure you put plenty of snow lands into your basic land deck. Because getting an avalanche caller out onto the battlefield early with some snow lands under your control can really be advantageous. Avalanche caller, very, very powerful in the two CMC spot. Speaking of power, we're going to move to creature number seven and our first multicolored creature in this installment, and that's going to be Eily, Eternal Pilgrim. We've got, come on, camera, get in the game. Zoom, there we go. We got a two, three legendary core cleric with death touch. We can tap one and sacrifice another creature and gain life equal to the sacrificed creature's toughness. We can also tap one white and a black. Again, we are prioritizing the importance of stretching all colors possible in the basic card land deck or in the basic land card deck. So you want to make sure you have your white and your black so that you can take full advantage of Eilie's activated abilities. And when we do, we can sacrifice another creature to exile target non-land permanent. We activate this ability only if we have at least 10 life more than our starting total. So if we have at least 34 life, we can activate Eilie's second activated ability, and we can really start getting rid of our opponent's most threatening creatures on the battlefield. All right, creature number seven from the CMC2 spot. We have Battle Brawler. We got a 2-2 Orc Warrior. As long as we control a red or white permanent, Battle Ball, Battle Brawler, not Battle Baller, although he, he might be able to ball. He looks like he's got some height. Battle Brawler gets plus one, plus zero, and has first strike. So for Battle Brawler's um, trip for Battle Brawler's ability here, it's more luck than it is anything that we can plan for. If a player can successfully summon a red and or white creature and put it onto the battlefield, then it'll definitely be beneficial because we're getting a three two first strike for just an investment of two mana. However, that's all in the cards. <laughs> Pun intended. All right, we're getting close to the first half. And this next one, oh, this one could be a doozy under the right circumstances. We have Beloved Chaplain. It's a 1-1 one, one with protection from creatures. That's it. 1-1 one, one protection from creatures. Send it into combat. It's not going to get blocked. Keep it as a blocker. It's going to chump block for days. So depending on the board state that you have Beloved Chaplain on, whether you have a great number of offensive creatures, or if you have some defensive creatures, or if you have creatures that can actually buff up the power and or toughness of Beloved Chaplain, you can really take advantage of the protection from creatures ability. All right, this is number 10. Halfway point here, and we're going with a classic magic creature. Black Knight, 2-2 two, two first strike, protection from white. So if you are staring at an opponent's board where they only have white creatures, know that you can attack with Black Knight and you can swing in for unblockable damage because white creatures, they got nothing on Black Knight, baby. Black Knight is CMC2, card number 10. And here's number 11. We have Blight Beetle, a 1-1 one, one insect protection from green. Yes, there are going to be a slew of protection creatures throughout this cube. That's a way in which to facilitate a quicker game and to kind of motivate and reinforce sending creatures into combat. There is an additional ability here with Blight Beetle. Creatures your opponents control cannot have plus one plus one counters put on them. So this could really hose a, a uh, game plan if some of our opponents might have creatures that can help to put plus one plus one counters on them. Blight Beetle is creature number 11. All right, number 12, we have our first mono red creature in Blood Aspirants. We got one in a red. Whenever we sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Blood Aspirant. It starts off as a 1-1 one, one Seder Berserker. We can tap one in a red and tap Blood Aspirant to sacrifice a creature or enchantment, and Blood Aspirant deals one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn. So there's a lot of different things Blood Aspirant can do for you for the investment of just two mana. And again, keeping in mind, make sure your basic land deck has red so you can activate Blood Aspirant's activated ability. 
All right, number 13, lucky number 13, and another red creature. We've got the Bloodmark Mentor all the way back from Shadowmoor. 1-1, one, one, and it just simply reads on this Goblin Warriors text, red creatures you control have first strike. Again, that's going to be all luck in the cards, but if you got some red creatures and Bloodmark Mentor is one of them, they're all getting first strike. And a hat trick of red creatures will cap off with number 14, and that's going to be the Blood Rage Brawler. 4-3 for an investment of two mana into your Momir Vig Visionary Avatar. And we, hear, we see here that when Blood Rage Brawler enters the battlefield, it will force you to discard one of the lands from your hand. Is that worth it in the early game if you're lucky enough to pluck this guy out of one of the 200 creatures with a two converted mana cost? Well, that might be all right. You're, you're discarding a card to cast the spell. You're discarding a card to have Blood Rage Brawler come into the battlefield. But you're getting a 4-3 for an investment of two cards. That could be enough to tip the scales early in your favor. All right, creature number 15. And we're going to onslaught for this one with Bone Knitter. A 1-1 one, one zombie cleric, one in a black, regenerate target zombie. That's it. Make sure your basic land deck has some swamps in it. The morph ability does not apply here because the creature comes face up straight from the or comes into play face up straight from our Momir Vig cube. All right, so let's hope that we can get some more zombies to make that activated ability even more useful. Creature 16, we're going back to white, and we have Bounty Agent. A 2-2 human soldier with vigilance, we can tap and sacrifice Bounty Agent to destroy target legendary permanent that's an artifact, creature, or enchantment. This cube is filled with legendary artifact creatures, legendary creatures, and legendary enchantment creatures. So Bounty Agent, well... It could be a very valuable creature removal in a format where there are no instant or sorcery spells to help remove those creatures. Bounty Agent is in for its defensive and potentially its offensive capabilities. A 2-2 Vigilance with 2 that can pop a creature if it fits the right criteria. And that's pretty strong in my book. All right, we're moving towards the end here. The next creature we have is Burning Fist Minotaur, a 2-1 first striker that has an ability that lets us tap one in a red to discard a card. And this dude gets plus two, plus zero till end of turn. So a fantastic blocker for ground creatures and a very good attacker, particularly if the creatures that are being blocked by it have toughnesses combined of four or less. Again, it's going to cost us a card, but it may be worth it in the early game to swing in for those early points of damage. Again, you're only beginning with 24 life in a Momir Vig variant. All right, creature number 18, we're going to Mercadian Masks for the Cackling Witch, a 1-1 Spell Shaper with a very, very cool ability. Tap X on a black, again, to make sure you've got swamps in that land deck. Tap X on a black. Tap the Cackling Witch, discard a card from your hand, target creature gets plus X, plus zero until end of turn. So you have three attackers and your opponent only has two blockers. Send all three in and one of them is going to get super buffed, maybe just enough to end that opponent's game. Cackling Witch is in there for its, let's say, combat chicanery. All right, number 19. We're going multicolored again. And we're going ores off again, this time with Cartel Aristocrat. 2-2 two, two Human Advisor, sacrifice another creature. This is going to be a very valuable sacrifice outlet in this Momir Vig cube. Sacrifice another creature, Cartel Aristocrat gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Offensive capabilities, defensive capabilities... You know, sacrifice shenanigans, cartel aristocrat may be one of the most valuable two drops we have in this cube. All right, MTGBC, we are here with number 20, the 20th and last card for this installment. 
and it's the Channeler Initiate, a 3-4 human druid. When it ETBs, put three minus one minus one counters on target creature you control. Tap to remove a minus one minus one counter from Channeler Initiate. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So the, the um, let's say the ramp player in you wants to make sure that those three minus one minus one counters end up on channel or initiate. So what comes into play is a zero one with three minus one minus one counters. Then during your next turn, you can tap to remove one of those counters, add a mana to your mana pool of any color, and you can get ahead on the mana curve by casting a creature spell from the Momir Vig Cube, one mana ahead of curve. Channeler Initiate is creature number 20 in the CMC2 spot. And there we have it, MTGBC. Installment number two is complete and in the books. Next up, CMC3. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.